What's up everybody? This is Colin from Holistic Heritage Homestead. I hope you're all well. Today I'm going to be talking to you about my favorite, favorite, favorite topic and that is chickens. And why I humbly think chickens should be your first choice. Whether it's a suburban, an urban situation, whether it's a hobby farm, whether it's a homestead, a farm, it doesn't matter. Whether you're of the uh, preparedness community or, or uh, the prepper mindset, or you're into survival. I think chickens should be your first choice. I think they really are the best option for most people. And two things. Number one, it depends on your resources, your situation, your location, the type of land you have, you know, there's a lot of factors that come into this. I think just this is in general, I think it's overall the best thing you can you can do is get some chickens, right? And some of you are going to want to swing on me. You might want to, you know, you might be upset with me because everyone has their own opinions on the subject. And that's okay. You could be wrong. I'm half joking, I'm half joking, half joking. Um... But truly, there are benefits to all livestock and all choices. But I think if you were going to think of uh, investment and a return on your investment, I think chickens are probably the best bet for most people. And without further ado, I will get right into the list. My top 10 reasons why chicken should be your first choice. Number one, they're relatively easy. But when I say easy, I mean they're low maintenance. There's really not much to do, truly. Um, when you have larger animals or animals that, you know, need to have the hooves trimmed or need constant grooming or veterinarian visits or checkups or medicine, you know, that's a lot. For chickens, depending upon the height of your fence or your situation, whether you free range or you don't, you maybe might want to consider wing clipping, but you don't really need to do that. We don't do that. We don't do that. Um, you might want to clip their, I guess it would be their, their talons, <laughs> their nails, whatever. We don't do that either because if your chickens are living a, a natural life and they're foraging and they're scratching for their food, just like our nails, right? they would naturally be worn down and taken care of you know, by itself. So you don't need to do that. There's not much to really do as far as maintenance for chickens. Number two, chickens eat a variety of scraps. They're omnivores. Do your research. I mean, I think it's so silly. I think it's stupid that some people will say, grain only. That's stupid and horrible because these... Animals that came from jungles, those buffer zones, those fringe zones, the outside, the, per, the periphery, peripheral of the jungle, right? Um, they eat everything. They eat bugs. That's protein. That's meat. They eat dead animals, okay? <laughs> Carcasses. Um, they're just opportunistic. They're like, they will eat anything, which is amazing because just like pigs, pigs are similar, which is another good choice. We have pigs as well. Um, you can feed almost all food scraps and kitchen scraps to them and they will thrive. They will thrive. So the fact that they eat a variety of foods is it will save you money on your feed, your food costs, which is always something to consider if you're thinking about your investment, right? Pigs, same thing. They'll eat almost anything that comes from your kitchen. Chickens, be careful with onions and things like that. It won't hurt them. I don't think. Do your own research. Um, but like chocolate, for example, is bad for a chicken. Theobromine and stuff like that. They don't have the enzymatic capability to process or half like that, half like that out of their system. So certain things are bad, but for the most part, they'll eat pretty much anything that doesn't eat them, right? Which is why chickens are awesome. Number three, they are, if you want food in perpetuity and for the, the preparedness community, for the survivalists out there, this is huge. This is a huge benefit is they're relatively easy to hatch out. And I'm not talking about using incubators and this, and I'm talking about a good, what you call a broody mama, a mom that's going to sit on her clutch or her group of eggs and hatch them out is all you need. 
Nature is awesome. Nature is so beautiful and amazing. So if you want food in perpetuity, chickens, come on, there's no major live crazy birth or chip to the, the veterinarian or, you know, a lot of prepping or preparedness that needs to be set up for a birth. They hatch out and they, the mom takes them under their wing, literally and figuratively, and shows them, shows them the ropes. Here, baby chick, here's how you forage. Cool. Here's how you eat. Cool. Here's how you can stay safe. Cool. A good broody mama will do all that for you, which is really amazing. Um, the other thing, and this is one of my personal biggest thing is um, you get two types of protein, and protein is key. We, because of uh, science, common sense, and, and, and everything else, um, <laughs> listen, that's another video, another debate. But animal protein, we are, we are firm believers in the fact that both on a macro and a micro scale, as far as vitamins, nutrition, um, and trace minerals, the whole, the whole spectrum, you need animal protein and animal fat to survive because humans, like piggies, like chickens, and a lot of other animals are omnivores. Our teeth will even show you that. Our digestive system will show you that. So I like that chickens will give you both eggs and chicken and meat. Now, cows are good for that. Goats are good for that. Um, but certain animals are going to get meat. You know, some milking cows, you might want to use them mostly for their milk. You know, chickens, steady, nonstop eggs, nonstop meat. As a side note, we humbly recommend dual purpose birds, dual purpose, meat and egg laying together. Slightly larger, bulky, resilient, strong birds that can handle the cold because they have a bigger biomass, if you will. So they handle the cold better in general. Dual purpose for the homestead, for the hobby farm, which is like an insulting nomenclature for me because yo hobby hobby is a hobby is i'm a i'm a i'm a numismatist which by the way is a coin collector that's a hobby that's fun that's cool hobby is like sport or something growing your own food is not a hobby it's a way of life it's a way of life okay so definitely something to consider two types of protein not to mention that eggs arguably more so than even the chicken in some ways, is a superfood. Choline, zinc, B vitamins, oh, full, complete amino acid profile. I mean, good dietary cholesterol, which is good for you. If you have a, if a doctor that says dietary cholesterol is bad for you, they don't get a new doctor. They haven't had an education since the 70s or before. Um, but truly, eggs are amazing. Um, after that, they are compost machines. Yes, you can get manure from many animals, but not many animals will literally take that manure and your substrate or your medium, the wood chips, the straw, the grass, the hay, the leaves, and will literally till it, break it down, shred it, mix it, homogenize it, and make it so small that it, the surface area is increased and when you increase the surface area now now you're talking about carbons and nitrogens having a chemical romance now it's all the magic happens now if you put large chunks of things if i just took cow manure sheep manure whatever guess what these chickens will shred it homogenize it Totally different ball game. I will tell you though that, um, for example, rabbits in some ways have a superior manure because it's not a hot manure. I've heard that you do your research, giant disclaimer. Rabbit manure you can put on a garden directly, supposedly. Okay. Um, chicken manure, I would not recommend that. Any manure I wouldn't recommend. I recommend aging at least 90 days and curing it in a thermophilic compost system, a heated compost system. However, chicken manure is very high in, 
It's nutrient dense. All your NPK, the stuff you go and spend money at the at, 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 at feed a fertilizer. Chicken manure's got it. It's got it. It's got it. So compost machines. If I wouldn't apply it directly. The next thing is they are small. So if you have a large animal like a cow, you are going to need a stock trailer, which is a thing, a big trailer, which means the vehicle, the gasoline and or the diesel, to move said cow to its processing location. Because most of you are not butchers. Chickens like rabbits. Rabbits are probably actually easier to process, and that's an opinion, um, than chickens. They're one of the easiest things to process, but chickens are so easy because they're small and they're handheld. I'm not taking a monstrous cow, transporting it money, time, work, to turn it into, we love steak, good steak, good beef, right? A chicken you could butcher anywhere, on site, in your backyard, whatever, you know what I mean? So that's huge, huge. Now, marginal gains or losses. Quail, quail are awesome because they mature quickly, they produce eggs quickly, but they're so tiny. They're so tiny, you know, you know I, I learned from someone who's teaching me, you know, this woman was so gifted. She could touch the quail and just hold it quickly and know immediately what age it was, if it was ready for butchering or not. They're so tiny. And I love quail. The meat is delicious. The eggs are delicious. And there's some science that show, research on your own, that quail eggs will help those people who are allergic to chicken eggs or duck eggs because there's different components that you might be allergic to within the whole egg. But tiny amount of meat butchering something this big as opposed to something this big four to six pounds you know it, it's a big difference folks big big difference so another thing number six i'm sorry rather number seven you don't need a lot of space if you have cows i've heard and there's different math out there everyone has their own opinion it depends on a lot of factors but one cow per acre is decent math, I guess. Chickens, you don't need that much space. You don't need that much space. The amount of chickens you could raise on a 16th and eighth quarter, half an acre is, is tremendous, tremendous. If you rotate them, if you free range them, you can get a tremendous amount of return on your investment. They're not like goats who are escape artists. And goats wake up every day and say, how can I kill myself? How can I escape? How can I upset my owners? Chickens aren't like that. And they're harmless if they do escape. Less liability. Your cow leaves your property, gets hit by a car, hurts somebody and or their property. You got a big problem. Chickens really... If I lose a chicken or two... I'll be upset because all of our animals matter, but I, I, I won't lose much sleep over that. So you don't need space, which is huge, especially for you on the, in the suburban or the urban environment. Ready again? Giant disclaimer, check your local laws from your government overlords. Make sure your city ordinance say you're allowed to own animals that our ancestors have all owned around the world for thousands of years. Food for thought. But really, check your local laws and all that stuff. Um, I know a lot of people who are just like thuggish, ruggish, who are rebellious, or uh, <laughs> maybe have that um, rebellious spirit. I don't know. Irish-American comes to mind. That will have chickens no matter what. They don't care. You know what I mean? Because it's about what's important to them and their families. Carrying on. Um, the best thing about chickens in my mind for number eight is that they're easy to get. Getting 
um, we have, like for our pigs, for example, we have kuni kuni pigs, right? And again, those of you in the Ozark region who might be looking for pigs, we're going to be selling, hopefully, a breed, um, a nice, nice, you know, a good amount of pigs, probably within the next few months. So I will tell you, we, we paid a crazy amount of money for our pigs because we it is an investment. We bought the top-notch, high-quality Best inbreeding coefficient ratio, DNA tested, chipped Cooney Coonies you could ever want. Whether you want a nice, cool pet, you want the absolute best homesteading pig to save you money because they pasture, <laughs> and you want old, old world red marbled meat and lard because they're a lard pig, hit me up, email me. I'm looking to sell it for a fraction of the price, probably cheaper, way cheaper than I should sell it. Um, so even them, they're hard to get. You have to find them. You got to research them. You have to, I traveled a little bit to get these pigs, but chickens, there's hatcheries almost everywhere and or other homesteaders, hobby farmers. I hate that term. Uh, People with backyard chickens that you can get chickens, right? Easy to get, easy to procure. The next, they're cheap. There's less inputs. They don't cost a lot of money. They don't eat a lot. They're eating grass. They're foraging. They're eating bugs. They're eating the microbiology in your compost piles. And again, they eat everything. So they don't cost a lot of money also the medical for them. I mean, the most you'll ever need maybe is, uh, the name escapes me now, but if they have soil borne issues, you know, you go to the vet and you pay a few bucks and you get the, you know, the right treatment for them and they're good. You could get some diatomaceous earth and deworm them or whatever. There's not a lot of cost. Um, you could vaccinate your chickens. We're not about that life in general. <laughs> you know, benefits, costs, you know, you don't need to vaccinate your chickens. If you call your flock appropriately and you use natural selection appropriately for breeding purposes, those chickens that don't quite live up to your standard, end up in your freezer, if you know what I mean. So there's really very little medical cost. The shelter, the coop, or the chicken tractor, and or the chicken run, all those things are, yeah, you can like anything else, put a lot of money and time into it, but it doesn't take a lot. You can go very, very, very simple. There's blueprints online for free for chicken crap. Uh, chicken tractors for, for coops, for chicken yards, chicken runs. This stuff is all free. It's out there. And you can go as simple or primitive, and then you could also, as I recommend, do it. When are you going to do it? Right now. Right now. Oh, man, I almost just got up right now and went outside and did some work because I'm not playing with you. Like, do it now. Upgrade later. Do it. Do it, do it, it costs nothing, it costs nothing. You, there's so many nesting boxes. You can use old milk crates. You could use cedar, pine, whatever, I prefer all natural. Super lightweight materials and create a, a tractor. You literally move across your property and let the chicken, Jeff Lawton, Joel Saladin, these, these, these amazing geniuses who have changed the world of permaculture and sustainable systems. These guys will teach you, like, come on now, there's no excuse. There's no excuse. It costs almost nothing to get it going. You can get a small hen house. You can get a few chickens. I recommend more than one because they're social animals, right? But it doesn't cost much. Look it up, do your research. Again, suburban, urban, doesn't matter your per capita income, whatever you're making, there's always a way if you're willing to do it. And you could feed yourself forever. Um, yeah, affordable. The last thing, number 10, 
and honestly, in some ways, most importantly, chickens are fun. They're so truly entertaining. And we have some different animals here, and they say pigs are so smart. For example, like, pigs are smart, but pigs are just pigs. You know what they want to do? Eat. They just grunt and walk around. They do really intelligent things, like super cerebral and like... But in some ways, I, I, I'm telling you, the chickens are almost more intelligent. The pecking order, right, which is the thing. You understand, you know, how that works and the alpha males and females and the interaction. The social order for chickens is so complex and so developed. It's really cool. There's nothing more fun to watch than hens, the ladies interact, and the roosters interact with each other, whether they're fighting or they're friendly or they're making alliances. And also the roosters, the, the men interaction with the ladies, the hens. They do a little chicken dance, the way they mate, the way they court, they're courting, um, the different sounds they make, the calls. Every sound has a different thing, whether they're warning from an aerial predator or they find food and they're calling attention to it. Remarkable. And anybody who's actually owned chickens will know what I'm talking about. But you could research this and see that there are so many sounds that they make um, that mean different things. And even, even a rooster crowing. A rooster crowing can mean different things. It can mean they're asking for water. They're asking for food. They're flexing and showing off to the ladies. They're flexing in, in, on the other men, you know. But wow, there's nothing more entertaining. And there's a gentleman... Uh, I think from New York, actually, a uh, guy from Edible Acres who has on his phenomenal YouTube channel, I've learned a lot from him as well, Chicken TV. Chicken TV. If you want to feed chickens some scratch and watch them scratch and work through things and hunt, nothing more entertaining. My favorite thing is what I call chicken football. If you, <laughs> if you want to laugh, take something like one or two things that the chickens are really going to go crazy for. A larger thing. Something that they need more than one bite. Throw it to them. Whoever gets to it, they will run and they will block and they will cover and they will duck and they will tackle and they will literally get some exercise, which is important for them. And the whole flock will go after that, that one chicken as that one chicken tries to evade and then they drop it or they lose some. And it's just the most entertaining thing. Chicken football. They're also great for children because, you know, the creative hand, God, in all of this is just amazing. It goes beyond genetic mutation and recombination. The intelligent design there is just really incredible. And if you want to teach children about male and female relationships and roles, the protector, the provider, Maternal instinct, paternal instinct, parenting. This is what I've observed, and I'm not going to get too intense with you. Watch chickens, because, again, the social order intelligence is very high. And they're incredible, and they're very simple. But children relate to it, and they understand the mommy and the daddy and the children and how they interact and their roles and the vulnerability of children and how they have to be taught. Children relate to them. And for the most part, besides some aggressive roosters, they're safe to be around children. Again, straight up, I'm gonna tell you as a safety thing, I'm always about safety. If you're touching chickens, most chickens will be fine, but salmonella, E. coli, whatever, wash your hands or wear gloves. Combination thereof, but Children love to observe and watch chickens, and they learn a lot. And nature is kind of a micro of us, the apex predators. We are the macro, whether people like it or not, it's a fact. Because as a human, I can go and eat whatever I want. And me, in my house, we believe it was designed that way. That's all I'll say. These are my top 10 reasons. And there's other reasons. Insect control, pest control, chickens will eat bugs, ticks. Uh, they will 
eat mice and rats, really, truly, they will hunt. I've seen videos. They're just amazing. They do great cleanup. They can manicure your property and trim it down, mow your lawn for you. There's a lot of other benefits, but these are the top 10. The top 10 reasons why my family and I believe that chickens should be your first choice. There are other benefits. Listen, I love, as far as the meat, I'll take a good porterhouse, a good ribeye, good filet mignon, cow meat, over chicken any day. Sure. Truly. Absolutely. Absolutely. I used to not eat much chicken at all, but I found some good recipes. Cooking helps. Cooking matters. Um, I think red meat is overall more nutritious. The eggs are on that level, the red meat level, as far as nutrition. But... Overall, if you balance it all out and what you get and what the chickens can do for their composting abilities for your garden, chickens win. Chickens win. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you prefer. Let me know your first choices. You know, it depends on your situation again, but I really want to learn from you folks. And this is a lot of facts molded into opinion right but this is what we think like comment subscribe i hope you're all well again my amazing wife nicole is going to be putting a video out this week and stay tuned for that because that's going to be a home run i'm telling you right now she's got some stuff lined up for you folks that is solid nothing but love and i wish you all blessings wealth prosperity all the love Take care.